morning and happy Easter. I'm glad you've joined us here on the Edwards Congregational UCC Facebook site. And if you're finding us on YouTube, I'm glad that worked too. We've been trying new things here and we are happy to find you and give you a place to worship on this blessed Easter morning. I am Pastor Lisa and I am representing our congregation, which is spread out across the Quad City area, as well as people all over the country who are watching us and joining us. We are so thankful that you are with us here and we want you to know that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We invite you to go to our website at edwards-ucc.org and you can find more information about what we're doing. We have some Bible studies going on. We have um, opportunities for Zoom gatherings and a coffee hour after this uh, worship experience if you are joining us on Sunday morning. If you're not, we welcome you to join us for coffee hour at 11 a.m. on a Sunday morning. And in order to get that Zoom password, you'll have to reach out to the church either through our Facebook site or our website or by emailing us. And we would love to get to know you better. We are a group of people who come from all walks of life, who are eager to grow in our faith, to learn more about Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit. Those of us who are here may have longtime faith journeys and some of us are just new and exploring. And no matter who you are, or where you are on life's journey, you're welcome here. We're a place where we embrace questions. We believe that the word of God is found in the Bible but that it is, um, that God is still speaking to us. So we are, are guided and informed by these sacred scriptures that we believe to be true. And we um, invite you to come along with us on that journey. We are here to welcome you this morning on Easter to proclaim the risen Christ. We have been studying together over these Lenten weeks the story of Jesus last week. And after all the events that have happened, the disciples are devastated. They are in the midst of full grown grief and disbelief. And into the heart of that grief came a stunning revelation that life had overcome death. Love had won out over violence. God's faithfulness would build them up once again. God's love will bind them together. Is this possible in our life? Well, today's worship will say, yes, it is. Yes, it can. Come and see. Live and love. This is the heart of the matter. Christ is risen. Let the people say, Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen indeed. Amen.
together to confess the ways in which we have fallen short of God's calling on our lives. Here we are, early morning, coming to mourn our loss and care for your body. We want to follow the rules, and yet it keeps us from seeing what you teach us. Forgive us our blind eye. We want our world to go back to the way it was, and yet we are a party to all that goes wrong. Forgive us for forgetting. We sit at your feet, yearning to know all you can teach us, and yet we close our minds and hearts to everyone around us, missing the opportunities you place before us. Forgive us our selfishness. We hurry to the hosannas and shouts of joy at your resurrection as we run past those in need calling for help and change. Forgive us in our hurry. We offer up before you now, God, silently or out loud where we are, the ways in which we have fallen short. Amen. Know that you are forgiven. God came to give you all the grace and all of the saving power that is brought to us through Jesus' life and death and resurrection. You are a beloved child of God. Amen. Our reading this morning comes from Matthew 28, verses 1 through 8. After the Sabbath at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go and quickly tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. May God's blessing be added to the reading of this holy word. Holy Week, what a roller coaster. Excitement, hope of a good dinner with friends and family, excellent worship with fantastic music, out of town company, worry. Fear, plans change, people scatter. You hear one thing, then you hear another. Tragedy, death, and confusion. You might have thought I was talking about your Easter week, but I was talking about that first Easter the week that Jesus and his followers headed to Jerusalem to celebrate their holiest of holidays together. They're thinking maybe 40,000 people descended on Jerusalem, a town of about 1,500, and I'm sure that the city was struggling to contend with all of these people descending on the city, all the needs for food and shelter and water and all of the things that they were needing and also dealing with them in the midst of a very um, tumultuous political time. Or maybe I'm talking about this Holy Week. Maybe I'm sharing your feelings of loss. Some in our community have even experienced death of a loved one. We've all lost the freedom to come and go as we please. 
We've lost the opportunities to gather together with brass and choir and shouts of hallelujah. Our beloved Easter breakfast where we raise money to support the United Church of Christ uh, Back Bay Mission in Biloxi, Mississippi will be held virtually on Zoom today at 11 a.m. Like the Marys who went to Jesus' tomb early in the morning and the men standing guard, we might share their feelings of fear. What does this mean, Jesus' death? Or for us, what is the meaning of COVID in our community and around the world? We each have our own list of losses. We each have our own list of fears. What do we do with all of that? Well, I'm suggesting we listen to the angel. Do not be afraid. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead. The angel gives us four commands. Come, see, go, and tell. Come. The women had to come to the opening of the tomb and look inside. Come, this is an action that we take. We have to choose, what do we want? Do we want to take steps forward in our faith? Do we want to learn and grow and become more mature in our faith? Do we want to take steps away from fear, fear of the unknown, fear of the what ifs, and step toward faith in God's power in our lives, steps towards God's peace. See, this is a choice we make to look and see what is truly around us. Are we seeing God at work around us? Are we willing to see an empty tomb knowing that Jesus died to set us free? Are we willing to see with our hearts that which cannot be seen by eye? Go. The angels send the women. They were not to keep the news to themselves in this Matthew reading. They are sent out into the world. How are we being sent into the world? Maybe on the internet? Maybe through emails or letters or good old fashioned phone calls? Maybe through sharing our financial resources or making masks, maybe by filling backpacks. Maybe you are called to share the good news with someone you know or by inviting someone to our Edwards online community in these days. But the go part is our call to make something happen. And the last word, tell, was the woman's anointing by the angel to preach and teach and share the good news of Jesus' death and resurrection. Who are you being called to share the good news? Maybe you're being called to share it with yourself this Easter morning. Maybe you've been on a journey. Maybe you've questioned, what does this mean? Who is this man? What does it mean that he died and was resurrected? Maybe this act of telling yourself it's okay to believe something that seems very unbelievable. It's okay to accept that gift of grace so freely given to each one of you. Maybe taking this very step and this very act will help take away your fear, which indeed is a hallelujah moment. The good news that we can set aside fear in favor of love and joy and grace. That is the good news that Jesus Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Amen. My friends, as we come to the end of this worship service, I want to remind you that Easter is not just one day, it's a season from now until the Sunday of Pentecost, which is eight weeks away. And that is the Sunday when we celebrate the spirit of the church coming to us, that pres the presence of Jesus' work, working and ongoing in the world around us. 
During this Easter season, we will continue to hear more about Jesus' message and what is truly the heart of the matter in our lives. We will gather each week around a meal. So go ahead and make your breakfast or bring a cup of coffee and a little something something and have it ready at your table for our worship time. We will incorporate eating together as we break bread and break open the word of God while we break open our lives with each other. We would love for you to invite anyone that you really miss or that you really wish you could have breakfast with to join you, maybe some loved ones or some friends near or far. We'll be gathering online and you'll find further information on our Facebook site as we continue to get a handle on this whole online virtual worshiping. And you can also find information on our Edwards website, which is edwards-ucc.org. There's a way that you can send us an email there, or you can send us a message through Facebook Messenger. And you can also sign up to get emails on a regular basis from us that way as well. You can also email secretary at edwards-ucc.org. Currently, we're sending out an email on Mondays and Thursdays with links to our various worship events and to our Zoom events, such as Bible studies or coffee hours. That's how we're sharing the password information for those Zoom meetings to keep everybody safe. It's also a way to keep up on how we're changing week by week and adapting to these new sets of circumstances. It's offering us a lot of a lot of hope in how the word of God can be spread in the years and days and weeks to come. We are out of the building and we will continue to reach out in the world in new ways, no matter what this COVID virus brings our way and no matter what ways we um, have to adapt. So just know that no matter who you are or where you are on this journey, you're welcome with us in all of these ways. So let me close now with a prayer that I would invite you to um, repeat after me. We know Jesus is present among us. We know Jesus is present among us. Even in this very home, even in this very home, we will not let fear be louder than love. We will not let fear be louder than love but with glad hearts and rejoicing souls, but with glad hearts and rejoicing souls, we will sing God's praise. We will sing God's praise. For we are Easter people. We are Easter people. As we close this time together, remember God is always with you. No matter what you face, no matter what your trials or hardships are, God is right beside you, raising your very life from death, guiding and directing your path. So acknowledge your fear and your worry and know it is a true and holy feeling and it includes joy and hope and love as well. Take heart, my friends, this is the heart of the matter. Let the people say, Amen. Amen. As you listen to our postlude, I invite you to um, share your financial gifts with our church. If you are a regular member, we thank you for your ongoing support of our congregation. And if you are just visiting with us today and you would like to take part in supporting the ministries that we, um, our outreach ministries, we invite you to do that as well. We thank you for all the ways in which you are supporting God's message in the world and the love and peace of this congregation, whether it's through phone call or prayer, card or message, all the ways in which we join together is a blessing by God. Amen.